So, hi everybody, I'm Mark Dudley. Um, I'm here to talk to you tonight about cross-platform scrolling, or more specifically, um, how to get scrolling animations to work on touch devices. Something you might think would be easy, but it's actually kind of difficult, or not so difficult after you watch this, maybe. So, scrolling is really popular at the moment. You've got your basic stuff like infinite scroll, pull to refresh, end of page notices, but then you've got your really sexy stuff like scrolling animation, parallax effects, really in vogue at the moment. So these really work best with inertial scrolling, which you get on, say, your trackpad on your MacBook or a, a magic mouse. Um, and in theory, they work really well on touch devices. Unfortunately, mobile Safari kind of gets in our way on this. Uh, Overflow Auto is supported, but it doesn't work how you'd expect. There's no scroll bars, there's no inertia on scroll, which is really weird. Uh, scroll events aren't triggered at all until scrolling has completely stopped. So you can't run code at all while you're scrolling, which you would think would completely rule out any of the cool effects that we've been seeing lately. So let's have a look at a simulation of what this is like on a real iPad. So you might want to see on this page some parallax effects on the clouds, text fading in and out, but you'll see nothing happens until it stops. Kind of ruins the effect a little bit. Um, so if you go to a lot of the, the really popular pages that, uh, that use these kind of effects at the moment, they don't, uh, they look like this on a, on a touch device. So how do we get around this? Well, JavaScript is really useful, specifically for this, in this case, CSS3 transforms as well. They make a great combo to uh, re-implement native scroll just using scripting. There's some libraries out there that do this already. iScroll, scrollability, Zynga scroller. Um, I personally like iScroll. We're going to use that tonight to try it out. Here is an example straight from the iScroll site of scrolling implemented using CSS3 transforms. Um, and you'll see this is running on my laptop, but it runs equally well on a, on a touch device. How does that work? Well, if we look at the markup, um, you'll see that there's a wrapper div around a scroller div. Um, and the scroller is moved up and down inside the wrapper using CSS3 transforms. So how do we target touch devices? Well, a good way, you can use Modernizer. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, we have a Modernizer developer in the room. Um, so Modernizer has a touch test that you can use, and if it's true, we can initialize iScroll, making sure it doesn't run on desktop like it is now. Um, you can also use Modernizer's touch class that it adds to the HTML element, so you can style it differently if you want to. Um, if you want to make sure that Overflow Auto is on desktop while it's hidden on mobile, it's very easy to do. So now we've, what we've got is two very different approaches to scrolling. Normally on desktop, you've got scroll events, scroll top, scroll left. You don't have any of that when you use something like iScroll, so we need to normalize this somehow. Uh, for starters, instead of events, let's use an animation loop. You can do this using request animation frame. This calls a loop over and over again. Um, currently prefixed in all browsers, there's a polyfill you can use. So you can use the unprefixed version. Um, and it also patches it in for old browsers that don't support it. So here's an example of how you might approach normalizing uh, scroll positions across platforms. Here we've just got a simple function that you pass it in um, the scrolling element for desktop or the instance of iScroll for touch devices. Um, and then you'll test if we're on a touch device and if we've got the iScroll instance, we will use its X and Y positions. And then if not, we will use the desktops, scroll top and scroll left, returning the X and Y properties. So when we punch that into our loop, we can get the scroll position, whether we're on desktop or whether we're on touch. And then from that point on, we can code in a way that uh, we're not targeting one platform. It'll be reusable in both cases. Um, and so now when we run this on our fake iPad, you'll see that now it's working perfectly. And this is how it would appear on an iPad. So if you want to be one of the cool kids and get in on Parallax, and you actually want it to work on an iPad, uh, now you know how to do it. And that's what I know. Slides are up already on bit.ly slash xscroll. Uh, thank you for it. Fantastic. Thank you, Marks.